What more can you say than yum? Yum, 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 yum. Oh my gosh, look at this strawberry. I am fascinated with how these strawberries are coming along. This one looks absolutely delicious, almost totally ripe, and ready to be eaten. This is Douglas E. Welch with a container garden update from a gardener's notebook. As always, you can check out the website for more information, douglasewelch.com. Here's another lovely set of strawberries coming along strong as well. And even in the background there, you might be able to see another flower, hopefully getting pollinated. As I'm recording, there are bees all around me, uh, hitting all the plants in the garden. And so hopefully those will soon start fruiting too. We're finally seeing a little more action on the butter crunch lettuce front as well. The other lettuce though, the leaf lettuce is it's just so slow. The seedlings are there, they look healthy, but no action at all. Since there wasn't a lot to show in the containers today, I figured I would get together and start figuring out how to use one of these containers that we uh, recycled from our kitchen. This was a croissant container from a local grocery store and I talked about this in a previous episode about how you could reuse these. I love the fact that it's got a little greenhouse top to it already. Now of course one of the first things you need to do is get it open of course and please try and ignore the jets flying overhead which I'm sure you can hear. Uh, we are in a major airplane corridor so you hear those on occasion. The uh, first thing you need to do of course is punch some draining holes in the bottom of this. Now here's the trick, if you're reusing any container and you need to punch holes in it, uh, say for drainage holes like this or in the case of turning a milk jug into a sprinkling can, you're putting holes in the lid to act as your sprinkling head. Um, the trick is drill from the inside out, that's in the direction you're, the water is going to want to flow and also drill into a piece of wood. Uh, I don't want to drill into my <laughs> pores that might be seem uh, potting mature, but you want to drill into a piece of wood. What that means is the drill bit will make a nice clean hole and not leave that little dangly bit, that chad we may have heard about from the old voting days a, f a decade or more ago. Leave that piece of plastic hanging there which can impede the flow of water. So I've got my block underneath like that. I'm going to just take the pan and See little sawdust come through, you know you're all the way through. This is very thin, so it doesn't even really take a drill. But I figured I'd make some neater holes and just punching it with a nail, which you could also do. And there you see on the back side, hopefully, there's nothing impeding the flow of water. So we're just gonna repeat that, make a nice little pattern on the bottom of this pan. Okay, and there we go, we got some nice holes evenly spaced along the bottom there. We're pretty much ready to put some soil in there. I've got some uh, soil from my homemade potting soil adventures. You'll notice it's got a few leaves in here, here and there. It did come out of my own compost pile along with some coconut core uh, from the gardening store and a little bit of perlite mixed in for drainage. Uh, this has been doing us pretty well in the containers uh, and in the garden, so I'm hoping to make some more as soon as I get another batch of compost out of the composters. Uh, things slow down a little bit. I harvested probably half of the composter. There was that much in there, but now it takes a while to get going again. So I'm just going to tap that in there, and then we'll plant our seeds on top and then we'll water it in to set the seeds into the soil. Okay, now as for what I'm going to put in here, um, I'm having a little trouble getting um, all three of these seeds planted and coming up and, and sprouting real well in the bigger containers out front. I don't know if that's to do with the squirrels or what, uh, but I figured I'd try. I'm going to try like three lines of these here in this pot. My hope is that by germinating them in a smaller container with a nice uh, see-through lid, We'll get a better germination and better seedling, and then I can prick these out and pot them up into slightly bigger pots and slightly bigger pots and finally get them into our bigger containers out front. Uh, as is always the unfortunate case, are the small size of these seeds. This is some oregano, I've got some kale, and I've got some spinach here. And again, I've been having trouble with these a little bit, so we're gonna try them here first, see if we what we can get going. It's always a little bit easier to uh, take care of them here in the smaller pots. Inside of here, you see we have this small packet within the larger seed packet because these seeds are, oh man, I don't know if you can see them down there, super tiny, oh my gosh. 
So, okay, well, let's see how we go. I'm gonna make a little furrow here. And I'm going to tap these in. Okay, and then just gently cover them back up. Okay, and then we'll water this all in at the end, of course. So set those aside. Go to my spinach ceilings here. Well, these are much larger. These are actually good, so I'll be able to put these in my hand. Just shake them out here. And then, actually, you can plant these one at a time here. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna pick one up on my finger. I can get the soil off so I can pick up the next seed. Plant, oh, I don't know, six to eight. right down the center of this pot. Nothing grows. <laughs> and I'm sure this shows that, you know, I'm not an expert in this, guys. This is all what I learned growing up. But I haven't really practiced it in quite a while. So I would love to hear from you. Be nice about it, but uh, tell me what I'm doing wrong. Tell me what I could do better. Uh, tell me if there's ways that I can improve on this process. Uh, I'd love to hear what's going on in your garden and what is your favorite food, your favorite way of planting them. These are the kale seeds I was talking about. So we're gonna, again, these are kind of between the oregano and the um, and the spinach in size. So we can kind of pick up one or two on our fingers here. The uh, soil's sticking to my fingers, so it's a little hard to pick up uh, just one at a time. I think I'm gonna have to pick up two or three of them. Kind of shake them onto the soil here. Again, you can always prick these out, you can always thin these out. I hate wasting seed. I think that's a problem with my own philosophy about gardening. <laughs> it's I sometimes err on the side of overplanting and not thinning enough, uh, which doesn't always help. Now, here we go. Just to cover these seeds up a little bit, we're gonna do a little more soil on top. And then we'll water this whole thing in and we'll actually go ahead and put the lid on to give it a little of protection, uh, mainly from the squirrels. If I snap this lid on, the squirrels are not going to be able to dig in this hole, which seems to be one of my biggest problems with seedlings, is uh, if I leave them out in the open, man, the squirrels just flip them right over. So there we go. We're going to go ahead and water this in. Uh, make sure it gets nice and soaked all the way through. Make sure the uh, soil, which has gotten a little bit hydrophobic, which means it's repelling water. Uh, we'll have to soak it uh, several times over, let the water run off, soak it again, let the water run off until it's fully hydrated. Um, you could also do that, and in the past I've often done that, mix some water in with the soil first before you put it in the container, and then you'll have a, kind of a head start when you put it into your flat like this. Uh, if I keep the soil in there, this lid should basically go right back on here, and if I clean the edge, it'll snap right back on and create a little mini greenhouse forest right there. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of A Gardener's Notebook. Uh, again, tell me what's going on in your garden. Tell me what I need to do better, what I, what I can do less of, more of, whatever. I'd love to hear from you. Really, I would. Um, you can always find out more information uh, on the website at douglasewelch.com again douglasewelch.com if you want to go directly to a gardener's notebook it's douglasewelch.com slash a g n thanks for watching thanks for subscribing if you enjoyed this video please click like on youtube subscribe to on youtube subscribe to the podcast however you most enjoy consuming my videos it really helps people to discover the videos and help spread attention to all of my work thanks again thanks for subscribing thanks for liking until next time keep digging <laughs>